To my channel it's your girl Bridgie how are you guys doing I hope you're doing well today thank you very much for joining me and welcome to my kitchen <laughs> if you have never subscribed please consider subscribing is the red button down there and if you hit on the bell sign you get a notification whenever I post my video so you can hear my voice is quite you know it's quite heavy because uh, it's 7 p.m. and you know it's been a long day and I'm in the kitchen. I want to make dinner, but I also want to put this video out there. So I've decided to multitask. I haven't done this in a while. And then um, I want to make dinner and I want to also chit chat. So it's going to be like a kind of cooking and chit chatting sort of video. Anyway, just <laughs> come along with me as I make my stir fry noodles yeah because i'm showing you how i make my chinese stir, uh, stir fried noodles tonight so i've got my noodles here not too bad of noodles and i've got my mixed veg straight from the supermarket and i've got my chinese stir fry sauce it's a very very quick kind of um, recipe it's not something elaborated so by now i'm sure everyone has heard about the standard the latest standard that was on bbc about the great lecturers in the university of lagos and the university of ghana that are harassing female students i watched that video i've been i've seen clips of it before now i think um a couple of days now i've been seeing you know different clips of it but today i finally watched the whole video um, on YouTube, it's about almost an hour. Finally, watch it, and I tell you, oh dear, Ooh, onions. I'm slicing onions, so I got my sliced onions here. I'm just gonna pour it in my teaspoon, two teaspoon oil. I have to take the BBC all the way from London or the UK to come and expose what is going on in our continent. What a day. What a disgrace. Like there's no other there's no other media media organization in the whole of Africa. In Nigeria, there's no Radio Nigeria. There's no NTA. Nothing. They couldn't they couldn't you know, organize something like that. I mean, it's not like I went to university in Nigeria, I had my first degree and at the um, University of Abafemi uh, Awolowo University in Ileife. Uh, so, if I'm, I'm not going to just laugh here and say that this is the first time I'm hearing about it. I can't say it, it, it didn't happen to me, but even while I was in Ife, there were stories about about uh, lecturers who were dating students and all that. Yeah, it's always been there. It's an issue that's always been there. I don't, I, I don't really think I've ever heard anything being done about it before. Like when I was in Ife, I don't think I've ever heard any investigation or anything like that. Any students reporting any lecturer for harassment or inappropriate behavior. And to the best of my knowledge, I mean, I'm talking about 20 years ago, so yeah, maybe not then, but now I don't know. But I don't think I ever heard of, of my of of this or any other university in Nigeria having any policy, whatever, about how to protect vulnerable children, uh, girls, or any student that is being targeted or harassed by somebody in power. Like a lecturer. Lecturers are very, very powerful in Nigeria. In any university, lecturers, professors are very, very powerful because their faith is in, your faith as a student is in their hands, basically. Let me show you. So, I put the stir fry in. That's how it looks. 
as a stir fry on the onions. Fry it nicely. This meal takes about maybe less than 10 minutes to make. Yeah. It doesn't take long at all. And I like it like that. I like it because it's so quick and easy to make. And it tastes really good. The kids love it. So everyone is happy. So, I mean, just look at that professor. Just look at that man at the University of, of Lagos. Boniface. He said his name is Dr. Boniface. <laughs> oh, I mean, you can't make this thing up. I'm telling you. And when you hear things that happen in Africa sometimes, I'm telling you, it's either you laugh or you cry. It's either two things, it's either you laugh or you cry. I'm telling you because there's no other, I don't think there's any other way you can react to it. Young, targeting young, vulnerable girls from maybe poor backgrounds or broken families or children who have no fathers children who struggle to gain admission, you know, their parents or can barely pay their fees, they target them for their own sick, twisted pleasure. You just see, you see this neck on his face when he was, you know, when they were, the, the journalist that was disguising as a 17 year old. My apologies in advance to all the complainants in the house. I have some complainants. <laughs> I apologize before you complain. Am I being? I'm going to know them. So, let's add in some pepper, maggi, a little bit of pepper. No, this doesn't need. No, this doesn't need pepper. So just give me a little bit. Add in some. This is Nigerian curry. Remember this curry? <laughs> I love it. There are other curries here, but I prefer the Nigerian one. The aroma of it is, is much better than the ones, the other ones I see in the market. In the shop. So, there's nobody to talk to. The question I really want to ask is that, is it a crime to be born a female in Africa? That's the question I really want to ask. Is it a crime? At home, harassment from uncles, nephews, cousins, whatever you can find, even fathers harassing their own children, their own daughters. You run to church. Oh, that's another ball game altogether. I'm adding the, the stir fry um, sauce. You run to church, yeah. Predators like Fato Ibo is waiting to prey on you and the Suleiman's of this world. Church is not safe. The home is not safe. Get into university again. If another Wahala idea, what is it? What is it? What is it? Why? Why is it that there's nobody to protect the African girl child? Nobody. Who are you going to talk to? Is it police? You go to police and tell them that uh, your lecturer is blackmailing you and forcing you to come and do what you don't want to do. Or they are acting appropriately with you. Or they want to group you. Or they want to force you to sit with them. They will laugh at you. Who are you going to tell? Is it your parents? You know, your parents will likely not believe you. Look at that man. That bunny face is a four, four square. Four square. When they are talking of Pentecostal churches there, eh, they have categories. Four square is not among the new, and this is not to say that this is about this is about four square gospel church. I'm just saying that for him to rise to that position, you know, to become a pastor in a four square gospel church, it means he's somebody that is in the in the society or in the community where he lives. He's well respected, a senior lecturer, is a doctor, he's got PhD, and is a pastor. Yet, behind closed doors, look at what he's doing. One of the girls said, one day, he was busy trying to have a good way with, he, yeah, with her. 
and he was writing Bible, he was writing notes for his uh, Bible. <laughs> oh, God Almighty. Ah. This word that we are in. Is it a crime to be born a female in Africa? That's the question I want to ask. Because what is happening to the girl child in Africa is so, 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 so bad. The girl child is the most vulnerable human being you can think of on this planet. The black African girl child. They are exploited. You know, name it any kind of abuse. In fact, I don't think even though Yubo people have come up with the, the kind of uh, category of abuse that you can think of that girls have been meant to go through. And then look at the Ghana one, just look at the Ghanaian one. He was denying, even though they still had them on camera. And that brings me to the point of uh, my news is ready. Look, it's ready. I told you, less than 10 minutes is ready. But I'm really, really pleased that, you know, they've been dismissed or that they've been suspended at least. I was talking to a friend in Nigeria today and she was telling me that six lecturers on the whole, six lecturers, six lecturers in, um, what's it called, in Unilag have been, have been suspended. Just to let me see. Like you won't like it before. Pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good. Should be able to make this one pretty good. Okay, go. Bye bye. Thank you for tasting. You want more? Mm -hmm. Take it and go. This is it. Take yeah. it and go. Bye bye. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Go and get the others. Who is going to protect the girl child? Is it a crime to be born as as a female in Africa? Is it? Look at that one in Ghana. He told the girl, he said he's going to marry her. He took her out, was badgering her, badgering her, and that, and this takes me to this takes me to the case of uh, Fato Nibu, the Koza man. That uh, people were attacking Busala, Kiniko, Kiniko. Where is the evidence? It happened 20 years ago. Can you see now? This is a culture. It's a culture, whether in churches, whether in universities, whether in families, anywhere you can think of. Even workplace. Workplaces in Africa is even worse. Where, you know, someone that is, is your boss, someone that is a director or a, someone is in, that is in a higher office than you will be badgering you and harassing you. As a female, where is safe? I don't know where it's safe. Look at all of them lecturers, they're caught red handed. Red handed. If not that, it takes a, like an organization like the you know BBC. I heard that the documentary took a year for them to record. If not that, they were ready to commit the time and the resources into you know shooting that video whereby this Dr. Boniface, his face was all over the place where he was behaving like the fool that he is. This is a way is a respected man in the community, respected in quotes, married man who is a pastor in a church. Yet, look at what he's doing. Opening his mouth and the way he was shaking his leg. You see the way he was shaking his leg. Oh, there's a room where the lecturers take the girls to. There's a room when they take them there, they do everything to them, and he was confessing. Eh? There's, there's a Nigerian, Nigerian parable that says that who the gods wants to kill, they first make mad. The gods wanted to kill that Dr. Boniface, and that's why they first made him mad. He was opening his mouth and was confessing all the things that are doing. Imagine even the girl that that was narrating the story that showed her face on the on the on the on the documentary could not finish her education. She could not finish her education. She had to drop out of uni like because of harassment. Who is she gonna tell? Who will believe her? Even if, who is going to do anything about it? Nothing. It's our life. But what they, they don't know, all these men that are behaving like this is that, hmm, what goes around comes around. How can you ruin somebody else's life and you expect that your own life will go smoothly like that and you end up well? No, 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 no. Look at this man now. 
He's been doing it. It's not today. All of them, including the ones in the University of Accra and all over Africa, all the universities, including the ones they did not even mention. Because I know very well that this is going on all around the universities in Nigeria, in Ghana, in Syria alone, in Cameroon, wherever you can think of, it is going on. So, all the years that he's used to build his career now, you know, got to the position that he is in his career, in his family, in his community, in his church, or whatever you got, whatever he thinks that he has achieved in his life now. Mm, in one second, he threw it away. Karma. Yeah. It's karma. Karma. He's done it to several girls. If they go to, to Unilag and take a pool, for the ones that will be bold and confident to come out, say, okay, you know that Tobani face, have you ever taken a class in his department? Do you have any personal contact with him? Have you ever had any interaction with him? Outside, no more lecturer, student relationship. You will see the number of girls that will come out. This has to stop. And I just hope that, you know, the authorities are going to look into this very critically. Asu, they are good at striking. Their number one thing to do is striking. And I don't blame them for striking. They have valid reason for striking. Nigerian universities that used to be one of the top, top, you know, there are some universities in Nigeria that used to be the top universities all over the world. People do exchange program. They come from all over the world to come and study. Now, if you have a, a degree in Nigeria, it's like you need to go and do a master somewhere abroad before you can recognize your degree. You know how long it is to, read, to get a degree in Nigeria? The minimum is six years. Yeah. Degree in Nigeria officially is four years, but are you going to graduate in four years? I said you go to a private university. You go to one of these government universities, you think you graduate in four years? No, 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 no. ASU is waiting for you. And on top of that, all these lecturers that God will help me and punish will be targeting vulnerable girls. Ah! You can lie. You can lie. I'm telling you, you can lie. So, I just hope that, you know, the suspension of these lecturers is not going to stop there, that all universities across Africa will take a critical look. They will first of all have the policy in place, you know, to safeguard women, to safeguard children, you know, young girls as young as 16, 17, who are entering universities. So in some instances, you have young, you know, very vulnerable, 16-year-old, 15-year-old. The other day, my cousin in Nigeria called me and said, Ha, 16 year old was already in university. I was like, What already? Wow, so you can see she's a child, but you know, she finished on time, or maybe because of, she's brilliant. I don't know how to do it, but one way or the other, they will get into university. Me personally, I don't believe that a 15 year old should be in university because I don't see where the rush is unless let them develop to an extent, you know, before they will go and meet all those people that want to see them. Oh. Well, I hope that uh, the Nigerian University Commission will take this on board and ask to that know how to strike, will not only strike this time around, but look critically to ensure that all the universities across Nigeria have the right policies in place, that they have the, the right channel in place for the female students to report, and when they do report that they, they will not be in any backlash or they will not be intimidated or forced to drop out of uni, that they will be supported for whistle blowing those who want to to do whistle blowing so that they will be supported to whistle blow on people who are targeting them and they will be punished because that's the only way you can stop them when people start complaining and say hey, is it the government is the government is this the government now is this is this one the government uh, may god help all of us may god help africa because because where it is now it's not good enough at all so I'm just going to leave it here today. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed my, my recipe. I'll do more. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up if you want to see more of my recipe and chit chats. I'll talk to you guys in my next one. I love you.